You ready? Yes. <gasps> Welcome to Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet you can find an uncensored version of me. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm here with my best joy. Wow. My Your best? best joy. <laughs> no, my best friend. I'm so stressed because does the camera look crooked? Does it? I'm stressed. Yeah, it, it, yeah, I think it does. I apologize. I'm here with my best friend and my best joy. <laughs> joy is her name. Hello. <laughs> how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Um, I did the thing that I do every once in a while. I go, you know how like you kind of your emotions have a what's it called cycle mm -hmm. where. I'm doing good. And then I'm like, oh, I'm doing so good that I got ahead. And I was like, oh, I can get even more ahead. And then I stopped doing things mm -hmm. because- Because you were so ahead. Because I was so ahead. And then I get behind and then I get stressed. Yes. And then I work a bunch until I get ahead again. It's like that cycle I'm in. Yes. So this happens to me once. I want, I want to say every three months where I get ahead and then I just don't work because I work best with procrastination. Mm -hmm. I work best under pressure and it's a it's a bad trait to have. Yeah. Like, it's great that I work well under pressure. Like, give me an emergency. I'm I will shine. I'm the same way. I work great under pressure. And usually when I'm under that pressure, then I'll get more things done because I've yes. gotten so much done. Yes. And then I procrastinate again. Yes. <laughs> and then, but I get mad at myself. And then every three months, it gets really bad where I get to this point and it just puts, it puts my emotions in a funk. Because mm. then I start getting annoyed at like everything else. Yeah. And I'm like, I have so much to do. Yeah. How dare anyone look at me <laughs> <laughs> or ask anything of me? Yes. And then I have to put myself in check and be like, this, it's not their fault that you procrastinated this much. It's not their fault that yeah. you didn't work when you were supposed to. So that is my funk. And so today is a Sunday and it's a, I'm going to film two podcasts and edit a main channel video all in one day. Yay. Because I was supposed to do that over three days last week and yeah. I didn't. Yay. Yay. Well, the, the main point here is, you always end up getting it done. <laughs> I always get it done. I always get it done. If if it's a main channel or a podcast, I get it done. Yeah. Vlogs, I'm a little, I'll skip a one or two. Yeah. Editing's a lot. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 I mean, Especially it's a, when you have multiple things that you're yeah. watching the video over and over and over again. It's a tedious task. It is. Editing is easy. So like if you know the how act to do itself it, itself isn't challenging. No, it's just tedious. And when you're on your own, when you're your own boss, which you know, mm -hmm. you are the only one that's forcing you to do it. Yeah. And when that happens, you can make excuses on excuses to not do it. Well, editing too, it's not physically straining, but me but mentally it is. Oh, you just want to sleep. Yeah. And eat the whole time. You're so you, you don't realize how focus. like overstimulated you're making yourself listening to the same things over and over again until it's. You're almost done, and then you look at the clock, and you're like, I've been doing this for how long? Yeah. It's the worst. I always try – not always. I've tried it multiple times where I'm like, I have a busy day tomorrow. I'm going to edit tomorrow's vlog in bed, Yeah, like before I go to bed. Like with Abby, she'll be watching something, and so I just lay in bed and I edit, and it makes me so sleepy. I'm I sure. can't keep my eyes open. I only get like halfway through it, and then I'm asleep. I'm sure. So, Especially in bed, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're laying down. Yeah. Whew, I'm glad – it's really nice having a separate office. It's kind of like watching TikToks or something like when you're in bed. You know how you're just watching something and then it just starts to like your, make you doze off? Your eyes get heavy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love when my eyes get heavy. I love that feeling when I want to go to sleep and yeah. my eyes get heavy. I'm like, yes. Yes. It's I happening. love it. Turn off the TV. Yes. I'm going to go sleepy. The worst now. is though is when you feel it and you're like starting to fall asleep and then about 10 minutes go by and you're like, it's gone. Yeah. Oh, it's not happening. Ooh, I saw if people have said this and it's very relatable. So I'll repeat it. I hate that the couch sleepiness doesn't transfer to the bed. I agree. When you are getting sleepy on that couch and you're just like, okay, I can do this. I can go to bed. You get yourself off the couch. You get into bed and you're like, well, now I'm wide awake. Yeah. What are we watching? Well, I remember hearing sometime in my life that like it takes a person on average like seven minutes to fall asleep. So that always comes to my head where I'm like, okay, just seven minutes, I'm going to be asleep. Seven minutes, I'm going to be asleep. And then I'm like so focused on seven minutes. And then I check my phone and I'm like, it's been 15. <laughs> I'm not going I, to sleep. Abby, so this, Abby doesn't like to fall asleep to TV. Yeah. And it's not healthy too. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not good for your it's eyes. It's not good for your brain, your dreams, everything. So a lot of the times, like I've, I've gotten used to falling asleep without it. Yeah. We have the fan going, there's noise, but there's, I've been trying to train myself to do no TV. And there's some days where, I haven't had a moment to rest all yeah. day. And I, so I don't want to go to sleep. I want to decompress. Yeah. I want to lay there and decompress. 
And I'm like, babe, I'm wired. I can't fall asleep. I need TV. And she goes, just try. Yeah. Just try for 10 minutes. And if you can't, then you can turn the TV on. Yeah. But just try. And I, I, well, nine out of 10 times I fall asleep. Good. And it's, it's a challenge for me too. There's some nights where it's just not happening. Oh yeah. yeah. No, there's those. And then I have headphones. I put my headphones in and watch TV on my phone. But, and I learned too, um, Dylan, when he went to go get his like prescription redone and his eyes checked, um, he was getting like irritations and like bags and stuff under his eyes. And so we were talking to the doctor about that. And she was like, um, do you guys go to sleep with the TV on? And we're like, yeah, every night. Yeah. And she said, if you fall asleep with the TV on because of the blue light or whatever that comes off the TV, uh, you're, you're, you don't fully go to, go to sleep. And when you're fully asleep, your eyes like naturally clean themselves and like clean the bacteria or something too in your eyes. What? So with the blue light, that process doesn't happen, I guess. And so you're more likely to have irritations and your eyes are really foggy. And oh yeah, it was God. really weird to like hear. Yeah. That's, that's bizarre. Yeah, it is bizarre. I've noticed since I got my, my eye surgery, the bags under my eyes aren't as prominent. Yeah. And I think it's because my eyes were getting so irritated wearing contacts all the time. Probably. And, you know, my fingers going in and out of an eye. And then I got uh, eyelash extension, so I can't rub my eyes. Yeah. Uh, but I did notice after my eye surgery, my eyes are really dry in the morning. Oh, really? I have to like, I have to, I ran out of drops, so I haven't been using them. But yeah, my eyes get really dry. But I've noticed like the bags in my eyes stopped and it's because I'm not messing with my eyes They much. definitely look a lot less. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm actually getting less sleep right now. Yeah. But that's interesting. Yeah. It also could be my face routine. That's true. I mean, I've got a really good nighttime and then I just added more to my morning routine. So I need to do a tick. You're going to knock over the microphone, aren't you? Blaze, up. Come here, dog of the day. Oh, oh there shit. it is. Lay down. Oh, you should be chill. You play Lay with down. Jeter today. Yeah. 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 What, oh. what do you have to say? What, him? He's just going to lick. We took off his collar, mm-hmm. so he's a naked boy today. He's naked. Naked. No, 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 no kisses on a face, please. Um, all right. Uh, so for this podcast, I did ask people to ask questions. It was all the same. You know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I thought it would just be fun if you, I tried to do this with my mom and it didn't work out because it, I mean, it was a fine podcast, but you got to just, you're going to. I'm trying to get himself (laughs) looking right into the microphone. I'm not even looking at him. Hey. Blaze, stop. You're okay. No face. Oh my God. He just keeps licking into the microphone. I'm going to cut it all out because I hate that sound. And so I don't want anyone else to have this. I'm going to just grab you by the skin of your neck. Just stop. Just stop. I, okay, someone did say this. I'm going to do my own solo pop. Uh-uh. Okay, we'll get to the thing I have planned okay. eventually. But someone said, and I don't know if this is true or not, I, when I do solo podcasts, lately I'd like to do, uh, tell me a mind-blowing fact that you've learned. Okay. And someone said, and I'm going to run it by you, that dogs lifting their legs to pee is a learned behavior. And female dogs can even pick it up. And I don't believe them. From what I understand. Joy's a dog trainer, by the way. (laughs) Yes. From what I understand is that, yes, it could be a learned behavior just like anything. However, for the most part, the reason why dogs lift their legs is because they're trying to get their scent higher. They want to be like high up. That's why a lot of small dogs will like pee like in a handstand or something because they're (laughs) They're trying to get their pee higher, like where the big dogs pee are. So I, I think that it's um, more instinctual. Yeah, more co- and more communication as well. I think that they're just they're leaving pee mail. They get a lot of information through each other's pees. So I think they're just trying to put it in a predominant spot. Yeah, to be able to not necessarily like claim that spot, but be like I was here too. Yeah, because you know? I gotta say, like Blaze didn't grow up with other dogs. And- yeah. Puppy boys do pee like girl dogs do. They yeah. squat. And then as they become teenagers, they usually learn to lift their leg. Well, but girl dogs uh, lift their legs too. It's definitely not just one Oh gender yeah, little thing. dog, she'll, she'll lift one leg up. But yeah. it's, I feel like it's because she's trying to squat as close as she can to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and her other leg's in the way. And she like yeah. just squats down. But I don't think anyone, he never saw no. another dog lift their leg and be like, yeah, that's what I got to do. Yeah, no, Louis was the same way. I don't think he learned from anyone else either. I, But Jeter's your teenage dog. Yeah. He squats still. For the most part. Every once in a while he lifts his leg, but he mostly lifts his leg if we're like, 
out on a walk or something. Yeah. If we're in the backyard, and again, I think it's just because he knows his brothers, he's not worried about putting his pee in a predominant spot. Yeah, because Snoop does that. When we're at home, Snoop pees like in a squat, and we're yeah. out on a walk, he lifts his leg. Yeah. Cause so I think it's more so for communication than it is anything else. But, but I'm I, sure it also could be a, a, a dog could see, because dogs also learn through mirroring techniques where they see one dog or human do something and yeah. then they repeat it. But it's lifting a leg, I think, is more of an instinct than yeah. it is anything else. I mean, it might be like, I've been wanting to put my peas taller, higher. Oh, that's how you do it. Yeah. But that I think they'd figure it out regardless. Yeah, I do too. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But I'm sure there's dogs out there that just don't ever do it. I would like to see that. Because one reason I, I love my big boys, but I will never own boy dogs again because I... They, I don't like all the marking they do. I don't like all the leg lifting they do because yeah. the girl dogs aren't, they don't, they do pee on the walks to leave their scent. Yeah, I, but I, I, I've had a different experience. My female pug um, was a marker, not in the house, but on walks and stuff. My sister's female pug, Layla, she's very, not dominant, but she's very confident. She's a marker. She's a big marker. But in the house? Not in the house. See, that's my big thing is I've seen the boy dogs want to pee in the house and have peed in well, the house Well, her pug mark. is in the house, actually. Mine wasn't. But Yeah, but and the girl dogs, I don't. when you're outside, mark all you want. I yeah. don't care what gender you are. But in the house, I've only seen, in my experience, boy dogs mark in the house. Yeah. No, and, I've seen both, but. Yeah. 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 Everybody's got their things. Oh, I'm so tired of you peeing on my things. Like, when <laughs> I leave something outside, it's going to get peed on. If it's outside, yeah. it will be peed on. Yeah. That's true. And I don't like that anymore. No. Yeah. I could agree with that. Yes. That's not fun. I'll leave like cornhole out there. Like <laughs> now it's pee hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, before we move on to what I have planned for today, let's check to see if we have a sponsor for today. Sponsor, sponsor. Skims. Skims is our sponsor for today. I normally find bras to be so uncomfortable and constricting that they're the first thing I rip off my body when I get home for the day. But Skims has changed that. You know I love Skims underwear, so I finally had to try their bras, and Skims has delivered again. Skims bras are worth the hype for the amazing shape and support they give, but what I wasn't expecting is how comfortable they are and how much my girlfriend steals them from me. Even the underwire bras, I'm wearing them all day and I barely even notice them. Definitely not the first thing I take off when I get home anymore. And I especially love the Fits Everybody t-shirt bra from Skims. It's literally the best t-shirt bra I have ever owned. I wear it almost every day and I need it in more colors because it's the only bra I wear. The straps are adjustable and the Fits Everybody material is obviously the best for all day comfort. And my girlfriend very much loves the Fits Everybody push-up bra in Onyx. So if you guys want to try them out, I highly suggest Yes, you do. Shop Skims Bras at skims.com. Now available in 62 sizes. It goes from 30A to 46H. That's a lot. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know that I sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select my show in the drop down menu that follows. Home Chef. Home Chef is our sponsor for today. You know, I'm not the biggest cook and that's why I love meal kits. Being able to feast on delicious meals without long prep and cook times. And that is why I'm shouting out Home Chef. Home Chef's meals are effortless, even for someone like me who isn't making it on Top Chef anytime soon. Home Chef provides fresh ingredients and chef-designed recipes conveniently delivered to your doorstep to simplify your cooking experience. Whether you prefer classic meal kits with pre-portioned ingredients and easy instructions, speedy recipes, ready in less than 30 minutes, oven-ready kits with pre-chopped ingredients, or quick microwave meals that assemble in minutes, Home Chef has you and the entire entire family covered for delicious meals without the hassle. There's over 30 options a week and serves a variety of dietary needs. And you know I'm picky and I think that they're great. Not only is it convenient, but it's economical too. Home Chef customers save an average of $86 per month on groceries. For a limited time, Home Chef is offering my listeners 18 free meals plus Free shipping on your first box and free dessert for life at homechef.com slash Rachel. 
That's homechef.com slash Rachel for 18 free meals and free dessert for life. Homechef.com slash Rachel. You must be an active subscriber to receive the free dessert. So what I wanted to do with my mom, and it didn't end up happening because I just don't think it really like was the vibe, is that we're going to go on a first date. Okay. So I've I've looked up first date questions okay. that therapists say you're supposed to ask on the first date to see if you're compatible. So we are going to see if we are compatible. Let's do it. All right. Let me get my phone out. It's my pocket. Hold I've on. been waiting for this. <laughs> it's my Fine. moment. Finally. Finally. I got the oh answers. Oh, my God. Okay. So if, if we think we're a match, do we end up dating? Probably. Okay. <laughs> we'll tell Dylan and Abby. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be like, all right. <laughs> we Great. thought you guys already were. Bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, what made you interested in going out with me? Um, I, I really like your personality. Oh, okay. Um, I really like your smile. Oh, thank you. I like the fact that you're tall. Oh. You make me feel small. Oh. Um, and I feel like I could learn a lot from you. That's really nice. Yeah. That's nice. All right. Um, should I reverse it? Why did you want to go out with me? Okay. Um, you're hot as fuck. <laughs> Dim, thank you. Big old titties. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, your interest in dogs. Oh. Because I have a similar interest in dogs. Very true. Uh, I felt an immediate spark <laughs> of, of a connection. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, you make me laugh harder than anyone else. Uh, I love your laugh. Oh, thank you. And I think we could rule the world together. Yes, I would agree. It's starting out really good. I think this is <laughs> this is a great match so far. Are we in love? Are we <laughs> dating? Are we married? <laughs> Should we just get out of here? I, the other day, Abby is she her love language is acts of service. Mm-hmm. So she will make me all the food. She will clean all my clothes. She will. Every day we go, do you need anything from me? We ask each other that. You heard her ask me that this morning. Yeah. Sure. Love language is acts of service through and through. I also asked you that this morning. And Joy, <laughs> my other girlfriend, is also. What do you need me to do? <laughs> what do you need? So uh, then Abby will say, it's like she's, she's on the quieter side. And so she's, she'll give me compliments, but it's not her like go-to. Yeah. If she feels like she loves me and wants to, sh- to let me know. She'll go do something for me. Yeah. Whereas I will constantly be giving compliments, constantly doing like, I, I do all of, the, I want to make you sure you feel loved. Yeah. So I'm going to master all the love language techniques and just shower you with yes. them. But we were in the car the other day. We, we got, we picked up food and we sat in the car and we're waiting for you guys to come downtown. And Abby was like, well, what do you want to do while we wait? And I said, okay, we'll just tell each other the reasons, um, all the reasons why we love each other. <laughs> <laughs> Nightmare. <laughs> I was expecting her to roll her eyes. Yeah. And she listed 50 Aww. things. And I was like, and I kept staring at her and she was like, more? I said, uh-huh. <laughs> she was like, okay. I have, I was like, oh my God. And it was really nice to hear. I love that. Because like I knew she thought of those things, but you know, like you want to be reaffirmed. You yes. want to be reassured. You want to I think, I think words of affirmation um just will go well for anyone. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah sometimes people can feel uncomfortable with it. And those in, the, in those moments, I like I could, like me, I just laugh. Yeah. <laughs> and I could have gone that route normally, but I was like, no, just yeah. just accept it. And I was listening and I just I sat there. It was like a solid five minutes. Oh, I love that for you. And then she was like, uh, and then she was like, okay, is that good? I was like, yeah, do you want me to do you? She was, if you want, I don't need it. And this yeah. I'm constantly showering her. She walks in in a fit and I'm like, oh my God, you're so hot. <laughs> and like I'm just always saying shit. I love that. But it was it was really fun. So this for, this question's actually just I think you could ask anyone at any time in your relationship. Yeah. Like why do you like me? Why did you want to, why do you want to date me? I agree. And my therapist actually said to do that. She's like, if you ever feel like doubting, just ask, like, why are you with me? Yeah. Like, what's, what's, what do you like about me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. even just specific to the day. Like, what, was there anything I did today that you enjoyed? Yes. Or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. All right. So, this one might make or break us. <laughs> okay. What are you looking for between us? Are you looking for a relationship, a casual hookup? <laughs> All of the above. Uh, sorry. Um, what am I looking for? With, with, yeah, you and I. Hmm. I'm trying to, I'm like, do I give a, like a fake Oh, I'll tell answer? you. I'll give you a real answer. You go first. A partner for life. Oh, uh, <laughs> I love that. 
<laughs> Me too. Uh, okay. Forever and ever. Let's go. <laughs> let's go, Carmine. You? Where are you going with your high five? You my tra- jacket's like getting caught. So you're it's attracting. Like- you let like go and you like oh, look at elbows. <laughs> there we go. Uh, uh, okay, and I think we will be partners for life. I think so too. Yes. I feel like we've already made it through quite a bit. Yeah. In three years. Yeah. Yeah. Three and a half. Yeah. We met at the end of 2019. Yes. And we were doing this like dog, dog training class together and immediately clicked. I asked 19? her out. 2019. 19, 20, 21, 22. We were about, what do you, math. Yeah. Five years? Four and a half. At the end of 2019 or at the beginning of 2024. Holy shoot. So four and a half years. Uh, time has just flown by. Well, yeah. 20, 21, 22, 23. Because it well, just yeah, hit 24. For, yeah. Yeah. So we met and I, if you know me, you know, I don't care to meet new people. Yeah. Like I'm, I will be nice to you. I'll always be nice. But like, I just don't have that desire to go into a bar and make new friends. Yeah. Um, I'll do it. Uh, but a lot of people in my life have a strong desire to do that. Yeah. And I'm just like, I have a, a thing. No new friends. I'm good. Yeah. I'm, I'm very much a intense, deep relationships with a few people versus- You can't have like surface level. Yeah, versus a bunch of surface level friends. Yeah. Like I don't need to be like, oh yeah, I got like a hundred friends. I agree. I'm, I'm the like, same way. Before when I was younger, definitely was fine with the more superficial, like just oh, that, big groups. Those are great. You know, it's yeah. always nice to have friends, but-, but Now, totally, I want to yeah. feel like I know you, feel connected to you, feel yes. safe with you. Yes. Um, Like if I consider- a best friend, someone where if like, I'm going through something, I'm going to call and talk to you about it. Yeah. And then just like friends, more surface level friends are like people I see all the time and I hang out with and like, yeah, we'll have good conversation. Yeah. But I, if like I'm going through something with my family or, or my significant other, like I'm not going to call them to yeah. talk to them about it. Yeah. 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 You know, like which it's is, like, who am I going to call? Which is normal. I think yeah. everyone has that divide in there. Yeah. You know, you have to. Yes. And so, uh, but I am, it's very rare for me to initiate a new friendship. And that's just how I've always been. And the few that I have are the ones that have stuck and are the best people I know. And yeah. I will be friends with through and through. Like, you uh, just get that feeling like, yeah. And like, I got and that, was, that one. And that was when I went up to Joy and I was like, hey, you want to go to lunch? And she yeah. was like, sure. And yeah. then best friends. But so we hung out at, t- at the end of 2019 a couple times. Mm-hmm. And then, COVID hit mm-hmm. and you know, everything shut down. We all went our separate ways. And then at the end of 2020, I called you crying. Yeah. And I was like, I needed help with stuff. And I, it was just so weird. I was like, I need to call joy, even though we haven't like, yeah, we barely knew each other. We just knew each other from dog training. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I got that. I got, yeah. I just got to call joy. And then we've, we've been besties since so we've been best friends since the end great. of 2020. Every once in a while, I always think about that, um, dog CPR class we took. <laughs> yeah. And how we were just like cracking up laughing and we're just class clowns together. Yes. And it's so inappropriate. So yeah. But the guy was making jokes. Like he yeah. wanted people to laugh at him. Yeah. We were making and it we lively. just thought he was hilarious. We just weren't being stuffy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we're being fun. Yeah. So okay. I think okay. Okay. Now the next next question. What matters to you? Asking questions that are too specific, like what are your hobbies, can unintentionally isolate the other person. Mm. Maybe they don't have hobbies, but ask what matters to them. So mm. What matters, what to, matters you? to me? Um, my dogs. Yes. First and foremost. Um, what matters to me? Besides my dogs. I'm like, as long as I got them. <laughs> that's, hey, and that's then because all. due to trauma, my brain goes into necessities. Like I'm very thankful for my car and for the oh, money in yeah. my bank account. Yeah. You know, but but outside of that, what matters to me? My dogs, my friends matter a lot to me. Yeah. Dylan matters a lot to me. Um <laughs> that might be a little weird on our first date, but that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Not your boyfriend. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> This he's is, not my boyfriend. He's my friend. Uh, that <laughs> happens kidding. to be a boy. <laughs> but I say, if you take out like everything and it's just me, like what matters to just me, probably, probably my, like my alone time. I think that's yeah. always been something like really important to me. And it doesn't have to be like super long or anything. I just like to be able to like quiet myself mm-hmm. and 
either like I'll just you'll just find me sitting in the backyard, not even on my phone, just sitting there. Yeah. And sometimes I look like I'm in a blank stare, you know, and, and people are always be like, are you OK? And I'm like, I'm good. I'm literally just quieting myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's probably always been one of the most important like yes. things to me. I know when you you do your couch time. Yeah. You'll do your couch time. You're on your phone or you're just, you take your naps. Yeah. I'm like. Even as a kid, I was, I was, I was like that, you know, yeah. my mom or somebody would be like, where'd, you know, joy go? And then, and I'm just sitting in bed, listening to the ceiling fan, <laughs> you know, like I just love Chilling. a good quiet time sometimes just to yeah. like daydream or whatever, whatever. Yeah. I, 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 for some reason, even though I work from home, I drive a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and the driving is when I do that. I yeah. daydream a lot when I drive. And then when I do my projects is when my mind meditates. Yeah. And I, I can do projects with other people, but when I do projects by myself, mm -hmm. that's my like meditation time where I'm at peace yeah. and stuff. Um, thank you for asking what matters with me. What? Um, <laughs> I, as you were speaking, I was trying to think of mine while listening to you. But uh, when you said alone time, it sparked my, oh, my, my health and my fitness matters a lot to me. Yeah, it does. And to it's you. like, I am not a fitness guru. I am no, in like, no issue. I don't want to be a bodybuilder. I don't, I'm not trying to achieve anything. I just, I really like being strong, like where I'm, I'm capable and I can get things done and I can help other people. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm so, I don't want to use the word blessed, but like blessed to have my body. Yeah. And I want to take care of it. And I'm someone that struggles with like genetic stuff. Like I have arthritis in my knees. Mm -hmm. My shoulders are fucking, are just, oh, I can cuss here. My <laughs> shoulders are fucking going. And I, there's just parts of me where I'm like, that's annoying. And so I want to take care of me as good as possible. And I see people just like kind of give up like yeah. in their older years. I'm like, no, keep moving. Yeah. Keep doing like your body is so is capable of so many things. And that's so cool. It's so uh, being at the age range that I am now, it, that is something I'm very conscious of when I'm around older people is the co total difference between somebody who has taken care of their body. And, yeah. somebody who, and they'll only be like in their 60s. Yeah. But the difference, like one person who hasn't taken care of their bodies looks like they're pushing late 70s and yeah. the person who's 60 is like yeah you could pass for like 50 45. yeah and it's not even about looking either no, it's no, just no i know what you mean but i'm also saying like strength yeah like you can tell they they keep moving yeah and even your mind yes is is different yeah and yeah. so like i i want to take care and i also I'll, i used to eat a lot of junk food mm -hmm. i used to like i not i just didn't care about what went into my body and now that i i i'm a little I still eat junk food and Taco Bell. Hello. But I'm a little more mindful of it. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I used to be constantly dehydrated. Yeah. And now I can see how much better I feel emotionally yeah. when I take care of myself physically. So my health and my fitness matter a lot, but not to the point where I think I know what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just have created a lifestyle for me that really, really works. And I, I always no, want to keep you do great. that. Yeah. When I don't work out regularly, I don't have to work out every single day, but regularly. Yeah. Um, I can feel my emotions. But you do it enough now for slip. it being a lifestyle where it won't affect you if one week you get three or four yeah, workouts in, yeah. small ones and in. Like, yeah. I have to be aware that I, I've been, I, I went on a hike yesterday and I wanted to do an arm workout, but I was like, the hike was enough. I'm busy. Yeah. And like the day before that, I was so busy with work. I had to prioritize and I was like, okay, but yeah, we'll, we'll get back into it and that's fine. It's when I would take months off. Yeah. And then I'm like, I feel so bad. I'm like, yeah. I don't like this. But yeah. And then my dogs matter. <laughs> my family, my friends. Yeah. I love traveling. I love experiencing new things. That yeah. always matters to me. I never want to stop learning and growing and experiencing. I agree with that too. I never want to be just complacent where I am. I always tell myself, I always want to assume the position of the student. Always. Yes. I'm never, I... Never been the teacher, always open to learning new things or yeah. understanding new ways of like looking at things. And no, yeah. I, I know that I'm never going to stop learning. Yeah. There's always something more. <sighs> All right. Before we move on, my battery's going to die. Okay. So let's check to see if we have another sponsor for today. Sponsor, sponsor. ZocDoc. ZocDoc is our sponsor for today. Are you that type of person that knows how to treat themselves? Nothing too intense, but when you're getting a pedicure, yeah, you'll opt in for the extra 10-minute foot massage with green tea-infused lotion because you deserve it. Or you do Economy Plus because you need that extra leg room on that plane because you deserve it. 
and you treat yourself to the top options with everything in life, then why would you settle when you're finding a doctor? It is your health after all. Enter ZocDoc, the place where you find and book tens of thousands of top tier doctors, all verified patient reviewed. Don't settle, go for the best and find the right doctor for you because you deserve it. We all deserve it. And with ZocDoc, you got more options than you know. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. The typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is just between 24 to 72 hours. That's it. And you can even score some same-day appointments. So if you want to check it out, go to ZocDoc.com slash Rachel and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Rachel. ZocDoc.com slash Rachel. And we're back. (laughs) <laughs> clappy clappy I need to- I always give the guest the better mic stand mm. because I, I don't need to fiddle mainly it's for me with editing because if it's a sh- shitty mic stand you're gonna be fiddling it the whole time like yeah, I yeah. am but then I have a shitty <laughs> I just need to buy myself a new mic stand basically is what I'm getting at There's, we don't need to talk about politics no we're on the same we're on the same yeah. wavelength with that what oh here, here we go okay <clears throat> back to knowing if I want to marry you <laughs> what does your work life balance Look like? Work life balance look like. Um, I I love working. Mm-hmm. I've always been a workaholic. Mm-hmm. Um, I am very bad at saying no to scheduling more work, even when I mm-hmm. should probably give myself a break. But mm-hmm. it has been something I've been way more conscious of. I'm trying to figure out a healthy balance. Mm-hmm. And I told myself this year, I am going to make time to make it to more like girls nights and things you, that, like I have to, I need it we've like, I been need saying to. the the group here recently was like we've been seeing a lot more of joy yeah and it's great yeah I need I, I need it it helps me so much and like I don't have family tech really so you guys yeah. are my family um so I feel like I'm starting to come up with a healthy balance especially because I, I like that we do girls nights on Thursdays like there's a few yeah. things that are to be expected so it helps me kind of like plan with it yeah I think that's the other hard part is our group is spontaneous a lot of times yes. or there's just so much of us that you hear the information through the grapevine. There's always so much fucking going and on. And I always have my schedule usually booked out like two weeks in advance. Yes. So last minute doesn't work well, but I'm, I'm figuring that out. I'm yeah. trying to be sh- shift with it. I'm also have that mindset of like, if I have three sessions in a day and I'll be done working by like three, but then we're doing something at like six. Yeah. I'm like, I don't have time my whole day. And I, li- and I do. So I'm trying to get out of that mindset too of like yes. you can work and have fun in the same day. Yes. Yeah. So I feel like I'm 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 figuring out a healthy balance. Yeah. And it's it's going well. Yeah. What about um, you? I was overworked and I had to take work away from myself because I care about my happiness and my relationships a lot. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I will make a little bit less money, but I will be more fulfilled in my life. Yes. And so I went with that. Um, and that's, and that's been working really well for me. I try and clock out by five or six every day. Good. And then there are some times where I have to work on the weekends and there's some times where I'm like, I have to blow off work. Yeah. Yeah. And I can make it up. I can make it up. Yeah. Like, like which is what I'm doing today. That was me the other night. It was hard. It was literally like 11 something in, uh, at night. And it was the day of the day that the dog that tried to attack me that I got into that whole thing with. Oh so my God. by the end, and it was a two hour session. So by the end of that session, and I had two more before that. I didn't realize, like, literally driving home, I, I had to keep my eye. Like, I was falling asleep. I was so Ugh. tired. And so I got home, and I was exhausted. I was in bed. I fell asleep for a couple hours, and then I woke up to a client calling me at, like, 11-something. PM? Yeah. And so, and I didn't answer it because I'm like, no, what, what's happening? But I already, in my head, I'm like, it, something bad must have happened because who would call me at this time? And, um, and then I get the voicemail and, um, it's some, it's a client who, uh, is fostering this dog who has some resource guarding issues and uh, he bit the husband like really, really bad. Oh, but, and I'm listening to the voicemail and she's like freaking out, you know? And I look at Dylan and I go, I feel like I should call her back, but I'm like, but I'm just your dog trainer. I'm not, I'm not the rescue. I don't own this yeah. dog. You know, I, I can't get into your, into my car at 11 and come drive to you in Woodland Hills and like. Catch up your dog. husband's hands or yeah. something. Like, I'm not a doctor. Like, there's literally, I was like, I had to tell myself, there's literally 
N- me calling you back right now will literally do nothing for you. Yeah. But I felt so bad because I'm like, this is a client. They need me. This is what they pay me for. And I was like telling Dylan and Dylan was like, it is almost midnight. Yeah. You are exhausted. Yeah. He's like, you need to just lay down and go to sleep. There's nothing you can do for her. And he's like, and keep in mind, he's like, yes, you, he's like, you communicate with your clients so much. You technically only get paid for the hour that you're actually at their home. Yeah. And I, and I like have to, but that's the part yeah. where I like, I, I don't give myself enough boundaries with my job. If yeah. somebody needs me and that I'm working on. As I've known well. that about you that I know that if I call and say, I need you, she's there. Yeah. And I don't take that for granted. I use that as like small as I can. But I'm telling myself, I need, I, I need to do that for the right people. Yeah. Like love my clients. It has, I have to have boundaries with that. But yeah. like my best friend. Yeah. I'm, yes. But I don't want you to drop everything for me unless it's like <laughs> life or really death. need it. Yes. Yeah. Like when Abby's in the hospital, I was and I even said like, you do not have to stay here. Yeah. I can make it work. If you stay here, I'd be grateful. But like, you do not have to. And, and I, was I was like, like begging to stay. <laughs> I was like, I want to stay here. <laughs> don't, don't kick me out, please. I'll pay rent. I'm like, oh, Abby's there another day. No. Mm, she okay? Great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay. <laughs> oh my God. But, okay. I, but all in all, I think I'm starting to find a healthy balance. I'm trying to tell myself, you know, after 7 p.m., no more responding to clients. Yeah. It's amazing though how some people are so pushy. I don't answer at 7 p.m. and I get another one at 8 or another one at 9. And I'm like, leave me alone. Yeah. There's a uh, there's some people I've seen that either you put your do not disturb on so they see that you're on yeah. do not disturb. Or you say, hey, I will uh, contact you first thing in the morning. Yeah. And yeah. like, you could do that. Yeah. And so they're like, okay, they've like, okay, she'll, she'll contact I, me first I've, thing I've in the morning. I've done that with a few people who kept texting. But the crazy part is because you respond, there are some people who think like, like, okay, just this real quick. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. So I just have to not respond. I think you need to uh, put your do not disturb on, but then you have it where you have a list of people who can, it doesn't do that too. Yeah. So I, w- I want for text messages, like emails where you can send like a kickback where it says, Hey, my hours of operation are between this time. She'll get back to you. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. You know, I, I, without me having to type that. Yeah. But I've thought about it where like I could just have that typed up and copy and paste, but yeah. it's also a text message. So they're going to be like, you've just texted this to me. Yes. <laughs> you know, so do not disturb. It's probably better. If I could go back in time, I would have started this whole business with a, with a, phone. Se- with a separate phone. Yeah. Yeah. I had two phones for with my last job and I hated it. So I was like, I told myself this time, like, no, I'll just use my, no, never again. Yeah. Never again. Yeah. All right. Next question. What would you do if you had a week off? Oh my God. Probably be here. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't even ask. No. <laughs> you just show up. Just show up. Hi, I have a week off. Let's I'll be in party. the guest room. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. You um, just, if, if on I had a couch week, with your blanket, yeah. you just walk out and I'm just there. <laughs> you find my robes. You start wearing my robes around the house. It's like 7am. You're coming out to make yourself coffee. I already have your coffee. You would be my housewife. Yeah. You would just be like, if, if I say, hey. if I end up moving down the street, that's probably what's going to happen. You're just going to be my housewife. Yeah. It's going to be a goal to try to get into your house without one of your cameras telling you. <laughs> Crawling through the fucking doggy door. Snoop's like, what the fuck? I get stuck. <laughs> Snoop and Blaze just come over and lick your yeah. face. Ooh. Oh, man, if I had a week off, I've said this a lot. Like if the videos are just up already and I don't lose any money, and I don't lose any views and I'm like, I just can't work. You don't for have to worry week, about work. Yeah. Nothing. All of the projects in my house I would get done. Oh. I want to put those privacy bushes up. I want to put that gate in. I want to break in yeah. the dirt. I want to build my table. I need to finish my bathroom. I have to patch the hole in the wall that we thought a pipe was leaking, but it was really my cat peeing everywhere. <laughs> I, <laughs> I want, there are so many projects that I am dying to do. But with projects, it's not, oh, you just go patch the hole. It's like, you have to go buy, you have to go to Lowe's. You have to buy the, all the shit for it. And doing drywall, it's about a three day process because you have to mud then sand then mud then sand then mud then sand. I remember sand. when you, you were doing your my gym. Yeah. Oh my god! And like my uh, the table I want to build, the sanding and the staining and the, the sand I couldn't believe how fast you did your gym. Uh, I, every I time I saw how you got m- more done, yeah, I thought to myself, my garage or my gym would have stayed in the first stage condition for like three years. I mean, 
if I, I I brought in reinforcements for that and I dedicated days to it. Yeah. And that's what I have to do. My, Power it out. My bathroom, the only reason it's to the point that it is, is because Abby's dad came in and, and installed, he did the floor and the toilet. Yeah. And they bought a sink. I have to hook it up and I have to do the baseboards and I have to do everything like that. And like, you just got a bunch of small little things. Yes, that all need one to two full days attention. Yeah. Because with projects, you get all your stuff out and then you start and then you're like, okay, now I got to put all my stuff away. Well, this would be perfect because your week off, you do projects. My week off, I'm here. So I help you with the projects. <laughs> I think this is working Have out you really ever well. So me with a project, <laughs> yeah, with my dogs, but like painting, building, sanding. I was moral support while yeah, you were you building the, all the time. chameleon thing. <laughs> you and are. That, oh, remember when you were putting up your lights, and I got you, up and I stood fed, there with you. you stood there with me. <laughs> You stood there with me. I'm like, what else? Have you, oh, you know, there is one thing you did help me with. What? When back in my old house, you helped me put together my outdoor furniture when it got delivered. I did do that. And we carried that shit from my garage all the way around the house to the backyard. It was heavy. Yeah. And there was a lot of it. We did do that. And we had to, the worst part was getting oh, out of the boxes. Uh, I've gone with you and Abby to the um, uh, junk place when we had- You did. Remember the dirt? Yes. Okay. That is an actual project. You that, that was a project. That was a hard one. Yeah. Oh man. All the projects I would get done. And I I'm looking around that. all the projects you have. Oh, I helped with that. The cork wall. I did. That was, that Emily. was Emily's project. I hated that. Look at it. It's terrible. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> It literally was falling apart while she was still putting it up. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I did the floors in here. I painted all of it. I did all the, the did molding. The, all of this. I, yeah. Yeah. You did I've those done a lot. Door. Didn't you do that door? No, I, I oh. had people put in the doors because I just. No, you've done a lot so far at this, at this house. Yeah. What? Did I do those doors? I, I feel like you did. No, I didn't. I don't. Did I? No, no, no. I had to take the, oh, I had to take the doors off and saw the bottoms off because mm. the flooring, the old flooring was thinner than the new flooring and mm. the doors wouldn't close. So I had to take the doors off and, and take a little off of the bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. And luckily they're solid doors, so I could, no one cares about that. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <sighs> I just, I wish I could do it. So I'd be moral support for your projects. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I'm like, okay, what if I did that? I could give myself a week off if I like busted my ass, but then. Should we do that? Should we just schedule a week off together? And then I'll actually like, you know, do things with my hands with you. We wow. Could. That was a naughty sentence. <laughs> 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 do things with my hands with you. And I'm going like this. What is this? And on our first date, Joy. <laughs> I know. Naughty. Naughty, naughty. naughty. Oh, we could. <laughs> Do naughty things. No. Oh. God damn it. <laughs> we could, though. Take off a week. I, I, we can't just say and do not anything and keep saying we could. We have to go. We could take a week off together and get we could. projects done. We could. We should. Maybe we should. First week of May? Yeah. <laughs> Let's check our schedules real quick. I love being an adult where you, oh my God, that's a month and a half away. By the way, like when could we I, do I a know, project? I know. I the fact that it's a month and a half away makes me feel better. Oh, about Allie and Holland will be here the first week of May. Okay. So maybe the last week of, but see, if, if Abby knows I have a fucking week off, she's gonna be like, let's go snowboarding. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, we, we send her somewhere with someone else to like a, a spa day or something. I want to do that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm gonna send my girlfriend away with somebody else. I need my daughter like, or something. Like, this is my fucking plan. Yeah. <laughs> Get Abby out. Where I will be the housewife. Step I will one, do things with my hands. Convince her to have a podcast about how compatible we are. <laughs> <laughs> Step two, convince her to take a whole week off with me. She will see what life is like with me. Step three, get Abby out of the house. Send her away. Send her away with the little. Oh my God, you fucking love Abby. Yeah, I do. You two lately have just been two fucking peas in a pod. I, I think we're, we're finally getting out of like, oh, we're so similar. Maybe we should rival phase to, <gasps> oh, we're so similar that like 
we should just sit on the couch and look make at TikToks. Rachel and do everything. Not, yeah, no, you guys yeah. don't. You both are like, ba- you both say baby. Yeah. You need help. You need help with anything. And I, you guys just both look so cute on the couch. I'm like, no, you two sit. Yeah. You two have to stay there. You be cute. <laughs> Tell me, do you guys need anything? <laughs> like when I almost got up to get the remote myself, but then I knew you were going to come back in the room. So I waited. And Abby knew what you were doing. Yeah. I was like, oh, the remote. We both looked at each other. And we're like, <laughs> go wait. Go She'll wait. be back. <laughs> You guys, I have a thing. I will do anything for my girls. And that girls, it could be I, I don't, the dogs or my friends or my girlfriend. I don't like when when we're to, uh, together and you're doing stuff and it's just me like sitting there. I don't like that feeling. I want to help. I understand. But because Abby is on the couch with me, yes. I feel seen. I feel validated. And I don't feel like she a dick. She <laughs> feels the same yeah. way. So she loves when people sleep yeah. over and, and they just hang out on the couch do with nothing, her. nothing, yeah. Because she's like, yes, I'm like, I have she's someone. doing it. So yes. it's okay. <laughs> because I, I have a really hard time just sitting and doing absolutely doing, nothing. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I have a really hard time with it. And even even not to cut you off, even on the days where I should just relax and I haven't been doing too much and I've gotten up, done stuff with the dogs, but I'm in bed. When Dylan's about to come home from work, in my mind, it's probably because my parents. In my mind, yes, I think to myself like, oh, I, I need to like make the bed or make it look yeah. like I did something today. Yes. Meanwhile, like, I cleaned up the dog poop. I took the dogs out. Like I yeah. did things, you know, <laughs> I did laundry, but like I mean, the other day, uh, I work in my office, but I go in every hour. I can't just not, I have to go get some FaceTime, some interaction, some something. I got to yeah. like go do something, not get out of my office. So like once every hour I either go take blaze out or I go do something. And every time there was a day where every time I walked in, Abby was sitting on the couch. Yeah. I didn't think anything of it. I don't care what she does with her time is hers. Yeah. Like I don't, Unless I was like, hey, you need, can you please do this? And she was like, sure. And just never did it. Then it'd be one thing. But yeah. she's, I don't know. And I just didn't think anything of it. it was just, and I walked back in and out all day and she was just on the couch. And then late in the evening, she goes, I don't want you to think I was doing nothing all day. And I was like, <laughs> what? And she was like, I thought, she was like, I noticed every time you walked in, I was sitting on the couch. But while you were in your office, I was doing the laundry. I was cooking. I was cleaning. I was doing this thing. I was like. Yeah, I didn't think that you were, I, didn't, I was like, one, I didn't care if you were, but yeah, two, yeah. And she was like, she's like, I just got frustrated that every time I sat down to take a five minute break, you walked through the door. Oh my God. That's like, so funny. I was like, it, no, for you're me, good. it definitely comes from childhood. Cause now thinking about it, um, when my dad would come home from work at the end of the day, around like six, seven, uh, he would come in, he wouldn't say hi or anything to anyone. And he would just slowly start walking around the house. And if there were things left out or dishes oh. in the sink or, and he wouldn't say anything to you, he would walk away. He'd go get into a fight with my mom about it. Then my mom would come down and just re- rip us all a wow, new one. Wow, that's extremely unhealthy. Yeah. So it was like, I, I think that's for sure where it comes from where, where I'm like, oh, I have like, somebody's coming back into the house. I have to like, I yeah. have to do something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mine, my, when I see someone cleaning, I think I have to help because my mother, bless her heart, <laughs> her and I are best friends now. But she took care of four kids mm-hmm. and my dad worked his butt off, but mm-hmm. he had to travel a lot for his job. And so my dad was out of town a lot working and providing. And when he was home, he helped. And, you know, he always called and checked. Like he was a very attentive father. He was a good dad. But my mom had to do the, the house and the kids all by herself. Yeah. While being her own person. Yeah. Like I can't. Which I think so many people don't understand yeah. how much work that is. Yeah. And so she would get at her wits end. We're four rambunctious kids that would leave our shit everywhere. And yeah. she would just, she'd snap and uh, validly and just, go, she would go and she'd clean and she'd be upset. And like, we had to help. Yeah. So if she, my mom was cleaning and you weren't, oh no. Yeah. You had to, you had to like, oh my God, you'd run to your room and start cleaning. Like, oh shit, mom's cleaning. Yeah, we gotta clean. We gotta clean. And so when I see someone else clean, I think it's like ingrained in me that they're mad that I'm not cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so like, I feel I have to. Yeah. And, but when I'm cleaning, I don't want people to help me. Yeah. Because I don't want that. You like to do it the I way think, you do it. Yeah. And, and I want to do it myself. And so like, a lot of times Abby and I will just like take separate rooms. Yeah. And I'll be like, I'm vacuuming. She's like, okay, I'll go clean the bathroom. And like, so if we are cleaning together because a party's going to happen or something, yeah, we do separate chores and not do them together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that works really, really well. But yeah, it's it's childhood. However, your it, parents so taught funny. you to clean is. How I like you're cleaning do it. by myself because if we cleaned a room together, like if it was me and my sister, one of my sisters cleaning the bathroom together, my they, my dad would always come inspect it. And if Ooh. she was in charge of doing the mirrors or something. 
and like in the corner miss water spots or something, we're both getting Inspected? in trouble for that. Oh, insane. Insane. We used to have, we have tile in the bathroom and stuff. He used to make us take toothpicks and run it through the little lines in the tiles to get all the grime and gunk up. And even in his bathroom, a bathroom we weren't even allowed to use. That is so... A lot of cleaning. What the fuck? Yeah, Sundays, su- that's Sundays. That's why now as an adult, Sundays are what I call um, sleepy Sundays because I'm lazy on Sundays. Sundays in my household growing up, were, those were cleaning days. You do not sleep in. We're up by 7.30. Mm-mm. We go to church. We eat lunch. We come home. We clean. What the fuck? Sundays here are called Grandpa Joe days. Grandpa Joe days. From Willy Wonka. The, they just, he just laid in bed all day. Yeah. He could have gotten up. Yeah. He could have. Yeah. And he, he will if it's really fucking cool. Yeah. But he's going to stay in bed. Yeah. So Grandpa Joe days, we all lay on the couch. Well, I lay till about 1 p.m. and then I get up. Yeah. I'm, and I, I love being able to just relax on Sunday. So Saturdays are usually like laundry, cleaning days mm. if I'm not doing a fun thing. Oh, yeah. I like doing my chores on Sunday. I like getting everything done yeah. on Sunday. So it starts my, my week off on the right foot. Yeah. Man, this is a phenomenal first date. It is. We it's going really well. I feel like the conversation's just a flow. I feel like I've known you, but I'm getting to know more of you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I might propose Should at the end of this. Should we take our shirts off? Oh, I, we went, I went a loyal commitment and you went naked. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking like in my mind, I'm like, let's just get more vulnerable. Man, you and Abby are very similar. <laughs> in my mind, vulnerability is naked. <laughs> naked. <laughs> oh, Do you want to see my big heart? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I know you're, you feel safe and comfortable with me because you have, uh, this sounds so dirty and it's not, <laughs> have wanted me to massage you. <laughs> that, yeah, there's no way for like, this to sound. Rachel, no, she is trying to get in your way. <laughs> no. So I know Joy doesn't like physical touch. Yeah. Unless from just, people I don't trust or know. Yes. And I am someone, not this, I don't do it that much anymore. Um, I give good sh- shoulder massages. Yes. And this is just very good with your hands. <laughs> it all sounds but you work out for. dirty. It all sounds dirty. But like I didn't know what to do when you first started going like that. I usually like when the first touch happens, even if I love you and know you, my body immediately goes like, oh my God, alarm bells, you're gonna die. You recoil. Yeah. But when you did I was like, what you is melted. Ha- like I just I, I heard birds chirping. And I'm pretty sure a little fairy like flew by. I was in a whole nother world. In, in, as a kid, my sister used to always be like, massage my shoulders or whatever. And so I learned how to massage. And her friends would, be, would pay me 10 bucks Hell yeah. to give them a 30 minute sh- shoulder massage. Like just, I just sit there and watch TV and massage and they're just like, bah. Yes. And then in high school, my friends and I would all exchange massages. We have massage trains mm-hmm. in like theater. We're all sitting in the aisles. Yeah, that massaging. was such a theater choir thing. We did yeah. that too. And then as an adult, I'm just like, someone's like, oh, my shoulder hurts. My neck hurts. I'm like, here, I got you. And I just, massage because I love massages. Mm-hmm. And I know how good it feels for someone to just happily and willingly just give you a 10 minute massage. And yeah. it, oh my God, it just makes your muscles feel so and much better. And want nothing in return. It's yes. like wild. So I'm always happy to do that. And if I don't want to, I won't. I won't. Yeah. And like, it's just, but if I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not doing anything. I have extra energy. You know? And I think I was already, I didn't even say anything. I was just going like this yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I just went over like, oh, I'll massage you. And the fact that I, I, I did it, I was like, oh shit. Sometimes Joy doesn't like being touched. Yeah. And I'm very sensitive to that. I never want, and that, and this isn't in a dirty sense, but I never want to touch someone who doesn't like physical touch. Yeah. Like there's people I've hugged that seem I don't, very. I, saying, I don't think we hugged as friends too for like a no, while. No. We would sit on opposite ends of the couch. Yeah, we would. <laughs> like not thinking anything. I, I'm very. But I, was, I always thought, I think it was you two that m- made it. Um, Cause I have never before meeting you projected that feeling of myself onto anyone else. I've never told anyone yeah. else. Like I feel uncomfortable when I hug you or yeah. like, how do you even tell people that? Like I've, I've just always dealt with it. And then when I remember one day you said to me, like, I know I can already tell like you, you don't like hugs and stuff. Yeah. And, and you just learned that by watching me. And it was probably one of the most like s- seen moments I think I've ever felt that for somebody to are, like dial into something so, sensitive like that yeah it w- and then call it out in the nicest way though to yeah. kind of be like i know this about you yeah it uh, was um crazy yeah i think i learned it um my best friend in college rachel wintling 
she hated physical touch unless she was in a committed relationship with the person. Mm -hmm. And so her and I never hugged every once in a while. I think she would, what was it called? I think she did the monkey uh-huh. where she would just like jump on me yeah. and then jump off. But she hated it. And then I started to notice that when she hugged people, she did, cause everyone loves a fucking hug. Mm-hmm. She always did a side hug. Mm-hmm. And I started noticing that people that do side hugs are usually people that are really uncomfortable with I'm a side phys- hugger with physical contact with someone they don't, they don't care to have contact with. And then having nieces and nephews. It's like half in, half out. Yes. Like- <laughs> and then having nieces and nephews, they were all taught like, they, they, no one in my family has ever been like, that's your uncle, you hug them or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, or like, that's your aunt. Like, you know, go th- give them a good night kiss or whatever. Yeah. It's always just been like, okay, say good, good, goodbye. But like, you don't have to hug. You, yeah. like, in our family, it's like, you don't have to hug. You don't have to do anything. Like, Which because is so important. Th- yeah. Like there's, and I've re- been reading more and more about that. Like, don't. Teaches consent at a young yeah. age. It teaches you how to say no at a young age. Yeah. I think pe- young kids learning to say no is so important because I did. I was not taught growing up that no was okay to say to people. Yeah, and it f- effed me up growing yeah. up. And now I'm like, <laughs> no, no, I don't want to do it. But yeah, I've become more and more aware as we've gotten older that people, it's it's your body. Mm-hmm. You I'm a, I am aware it. of that because I'm that way. When people side hug, yeah. it is a mental note I, I take. Yeah. And like, there's been a few people where, and Abby was like, babe, you're going to make the, like, why the fuck did you ask them that? Cause like, I'll give them a hug and they don't, they do a very light fat, fat and like, they don't, they aren't in on it. And I've been like, oh, are you, are you more a high fiver? Yeah. And yeah. like, I'll do something like that. And they're, they're like, oh, you don't like hugs? And they're like, no, I like hugs. I'm like, well, then fucking put some oomph into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I'll just kind of make a joke out of it. But I usually don't go, I, I will let the other person come in for it too. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't assume the yeah. hug either. Yeah. yeah. And then guys, I always shake their hand. Yeah. I always, I, I was like, you're such a dude. That's so and she's funny. like, you're always like, what a man? And like, shake their hand. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't so fucking funny. know. It's just like a, something that comes out. But I mean, I'm a, I'm a physical touch person. I love hugs. I love yeah. all that shit. But it is so important to be hyper aware of the other person. Yeah. And the older, older generations, like our p- parents and their parents, like it was disrespectful if you didn't give a family member or somebody like a hug or yeah. something like that. Like, and I it's, just, it's not even like, it's not a sexual thing. It's not like a predator thing. It's like yeah. some people just don't like hugs and yeah. that's okay. Even as a kid, I hated um, being forced to even stand next to Santa for <laughs> a freaking Christmas card, which a lot of kids do. But yeah. I've always thought in my head, like, why do I have to sit on this stranger's lap? Yeah. I always thought that. And it was like, oh, it's just Chris. Oh, it's just Santa. Uh, but I like hearing now a lot more parents are conscious of that. And I've seen a lot more things where Santa's sitting in a sleigh and the kids are standing next to it. The family's like standing next to it. There's a lot more of that now. Yeah. I actually think COVID started that. Yeah. And then people are like, hey, this is a lot less creepy. And Let's my keep kid's not screaming yeah. while taking a photo. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's still the Santa lap th- stuff, but yeah. it's... Uh, there's there's different versions now, which I appreciate. Yeah, I do too. We're coming up on 53 minutes of this first we, day. I think we're good. Yeah. Did I was going to say, do you want to pick one last question? Did you want to get naked? Juicy one? <laughs> is what I thought you were going to ask It me? is Rachel Uncensored. Um, oh, when you spend time with people, how often are you the one making the plans? I don't know why you'd ask this on a first date. But that is just some, and this is just therapy. Maybe like a, yeah, to see if you're kind of like a planner or like, I, I could see w- where the psychology is in that I question. guess like to learn about a person. I will answer very honestly and say, no, I'm not. I am very good with go with the flow. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. But like, like for instance, not to talk about Dylan again on our date, but for his 30th birthday. <laughs> Damn it. I'm like, I want to be a planner. I want to be able to look up events and like plan things. And I'm sure I'm, I believe in myself. I could do it. But if I have the option to opt out Mm -hmm. and just go with the flow, that's what I like to do. Yeah. No, I feel that. And I feel like with hanging out, you, because of your current living situation, you don't invite people over to your house. And so, but so, and then, but you're not going to be like, well, you do do this, but it's more likely, more common that I would be like, hey, come over. Yeah. Versus you being like, hey, I'm coming over. Yes, yes. Which I wouldn't be mad about. Yeah. But that's just like the fact of the matter. Yeah. Because a lot of people, I, sometimes I'm like, oh man, I never drive to Joy. And I'm like, well, because. But what would we do? Yeah. I, it, we'd have to go like do. And that's when I do see you down there is when there's an event happening. Yeah. But it's like, when you come here, 
we hang out of the house. We go do a thing. We come back and we hang out at the house. Yeah. And if I drove down there, it's just like the two hours of the event. And then which I have that's said, the end of it. Which I have said many times now, I can't wait to get a place so I can finally like host a girls night or something. Yeah, so that's when I'll be able to like yeah. start doing that kind of stuff. But could I be a planner? Yes. Would I love to just assume the position of tell me where we're going, how much money you need I me to love bring? That. I'm great for that. I'm, I'm good at planning. I'm good at planning the, uh, the boring shit. Yeah. The travel, the staying, and, but Perfect. Abby, That's the stuff I really don't like. Uh, well, I can find the food I, and find <laughs> events. See, okay. You and Abby are the same because Abby <laughs> does, her and I are the exact opposite and it, and it works so well with traveling. Yeah. As I book the flights and the place to stay. A lot, a lot of the time she loves finding the Airbnbs. But I'm in charge of like booking it and making mm-hmm. sure the dates are okay and having the directions. Yeah. And the contact That's information. That's what Dylan does. You're very much Dylan in the yes. relationship. <laughs> and then Abby finds the pla- the places to go, the food to eat, mm-hmm. the events to She go did a to. good job with Vegas. Oh, yeah. And yeah. she loves that shit. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I th- all so what all, I'm getting we is. We would work great together. Because we are each other's, other's person. person. It's like we're like you're Abby and I'm yeah, Dylan. Yeah. So we do know that this relationship would work. work. But I think it would be more complicated to break up with the current <laughs> things and then get together. No. I think we'll just stay where we're at. No. I don't think that would part would I think that would be the easiest. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Get naked. <laughs> I have one final question. Oh, okay. Sure. What do you think would probably be our biggest like hurdle? You and me? Yeah. Um if wait, and like if we were dating. If we were dating. Okay, but we're not but not, we're not not breaking up Dylan and Abby or anything. We're yeah. just like if we and I if were this, dating. If, we were if this really, was an actual relationship. Yeah, we, we've our, known each other. We've known each other long enough. What do we think would be our biggest like hurdle? Ooh. Trying to think. Hmm. <laughs> trying to think. You, I, if we were I, dating, I, your nails would have to be shorter. That would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that. I could do that. Or I just always have like little acrylics so they're nice and smooth. Um, um, I'm I th- trying to think. I, I've never had a t- moment where like, I was like, oh, I don't like that. Or, oh, th- like. Are you saying we would be perfect together is what you're saying? Yeah, mm. pretty mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think, like, what could I see us, like, disagreeing about or. <laughs> we like to go to bed with the TV on. We, we love dogs. We love dogs. I, I, I think if we were together. We would be living in a house that is capable of owning more dogs. Yes. And I would say no. And you would have a really hard time with that, of me saying no more dogs. And But with the capability, I, I, that yeah. would be our problem. It would, that would be the problem. That would be the yes. thing where I just add another one to the pack and just wait to see how long it takes. And I'd be like, like, no. I'm like, I already have a home ready for it. <laughs> we're just fostering. And then six years go by and you're like. I think that I'll be would like, be our died. biggest thing. It's like, <laughs> I, I love animals and I am capable of handling animals. And I'm responsible as fuck with animals. But I think I've 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 hit my limit. But not that Abby, m- not that Abby doesn't help you. But I think with my experience, I think but it wouldn't be as stressful as you think it would be because I would help. We would do the walks together, hikes together. I'd do all the training. I'd help you pick up. Trying the to convince me to get more jobs. This, would be our this problem. Is would be the problem. And we're not even together. I know. Is I I love animals. We probably have a bird by now. And no, you wouldn't oh like no, that. I do not want a bird. I, I don't want a fish. I don't care for reptiles that much. I don't really want fish either. I don't want animals. That I just I can't really do got the reptiles with. because I couldn't get more dogs where I was. I was like, I'll get a snake. I don't want to say. I think it would be that we would have the capabilities of owning more animals. But I think because you and I no, would travel thing- more together, that I would I I would be okay because I love my animals. Yeah. But that recently has been a, a more of a thing for me where I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, wow, I really would love to like go. To, I want to go to the UK. I want to go to Thailand. I want to go here. I want to go there. And I'm like, wow, I really can't like do that stuff right now. Yeah. Because you have Suka who can only be watched by you, Dylan, or me. Yeah. Yeah. So if the three of us want to travel together, yeah. it's not a thing. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's, I think that would be our big thing. I Even though, so And then I would have to keep you traveling. Yeah. 
to be like, sorry, you can't get another dog. We're going to Japan. Sounds like a win-win oh, so to me. I just have so to either try- Japan or more dogs. And the way to ask God, for vacation you, is, is I just start looking on at shelters and stuff. And then you're like, you oh, and Abby are okay. literally the same <laughs> fucking human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would Which be Which is why I'm in love with hurdle. both of you. Yes. This is the thing. And it's why I think both of you are in love with each other now. Yes. Yes. I, I think agree. we've got, got quite, everyone's just going to think we're Abby all and I truck validate truckle. each other. Yes, you do. <laughs> oh, God. This is a fun, um, different episode. I like this. Yeah. It yeah. was good. Yeah. Second, thought, second date? I'll check with my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be like, yeah, can I come? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys that's it for today thank you for joining if you like this please subscribe please like please like please leave a comment um joy will most likely be back maybe we'll do a second date maybe maybe if you mm. like it um but that's it thank you for being here of course thank you uh, we'll see you next time bye, bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet where you can find the uncensored version of me, Rachel Ballinger. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, or follow, or do whatever this platform tells you to do so that you can get notified every time I post a new episode. Love ya!